My name is John Ross from the Art of Retouching Studio. In this video, I want to clear up the usual common misconception about color modes, color models, color profiles, and color spaces. Give me a few minutes of your time and you will no longer be confused by it. The base cause of this confusion stems from my research on this topic. Half of the website said one thing, the other half say something completely different. Rest assured that I'm a qualified professional, I've done my research, and I know the correct information. Be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification. Let's narrow down the amount of information that you need to learn by simply telling you that color modes and color models are the exact same thing. If you want to get Photoshop's opinion on this topic, simply go to Edit, Color Modes. Here, you will see several different items. In an attempt to limit the possibilities, you can see here that the most common are RGB, red, green, and blue, and CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. To be specific, CMYK is for printing, RGB is for everything else. There are other options like lab color and multicolor, but these can be attributed to advanced print settings that I will definitely not be covering in this video. Color is a pretty complex subject when it comes to photography. This means that we need some way to define the subset of colors that a camera can capture and the monitors can display. We do this by assigning specific color values to every pixel. However, this does not include RAW files that your DSL camera may take. The RAW file format is a separate topic. Here, we are simply going to be talking about the JPEGs taken out of your camera, either DSLR or your phone. Each pixel within the RGB mode is assigned a value between 0 and 255 for each of the colors red, green, and blue. From here, there are technically different bit depths of 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit color. If you want to learn more about those, I have a link in the description below. But for this video, we will be talking about the most common 8-bit displays. We also need a way to keep colors consistent between different devices. A certain shade of red that your camera captures should look the same shade of red on your monitor. This is where the color spaces and color profiles come in. And it's also this next section that gets more confusing. Like previous, color profiles and color spaces are exactly the same. In an effort to be clear, color modes and color models are the same, and color profiles and color spaces are also the same. For simplicity's sake, we will now refer to them as color modes and color profiles, as these are the most common terms. They are also the terms used within Adobe Photoshop. Color profiles are subsets of the color modes. As color modes are CMYK and RGB, color profiles are able to better target the information about those color modes. The most common of RGB color profiles are sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Profoto. Color profiles are one of those things that work in the background, and most people don't even have to think about it. Most generic devices like your computers, TVs, and cell phones all use the same sRGB profile by default. It doesn't matter if you have an Android or an iPhone, Windows PC, or an iMac. They are all using the same sRGB profile by default. With the 8-bit RGB color mode, we can display or capture 16.7 million colors. But the question is, with an unlimited amount of possible shades of a color, which of the 16.7 million colors should we actually use? This is where color profiles come in. Color profiles are used to define the colors that we see on our displays. They control the colors that are used and help provide consistency between different devices. Technically, each device will look a little bit different due to brightness, age, and internal calibration, but it is using the same basic information, which again, in most devices, is sRGB. There are several RGB color profiles that are popular, sRGB, Adobe RGB, Profoto, and a couple others. I'm intentionally omitting the odder ones in this video like CIE Lab, CIE XYX, and DCI PI3. They may all have their place, but I'll be moving on. sRGB is used for internet-based images. It has a limited basis of color and easy to manage across many devices. From cell phones to projectors, it is a vast industry standard. Unless you're getting into specialized uses, sRGB is likely the only color profile you're going to run into. Adobe RGB is a bit more targeted. It is used mostly by photographers. If you are an industry professional, then you know that Adobe RGB allows you to access more color possibilities than sRGB. While sRGB and Adobe RGB are mostly similar, greens and blues will show the biggest differences. More expensive monitors that use a 10-bit display can show off the wider gamut of colors. Profoto theoretically includes colors that the human eye can't even see. While it works well in a closed-loop 16-bit system between software display and printer, it should not be used randomly. Besides, if our eyes can't see it and our monitors can't display it and our printers can't even print it, why use it? You may be wondering why I'm even including Profoto when I say you shouldn't even use it. 
The funny thing is, you may be using it every day and not even realizing it. When you work in a raw processor like Lightroom, this is what they use to render color while you're working on your raw files. It isn't until you actually export the file that you are assigning it a different color profile. Many cameras these days give you a choice in the options of using sRGB or Adobe RGB. These apply to JPEGs created within the camera, not to the raw files. So pick Adobe RGB, although it really won't matter much. In this chart, you will see all the colors of the spectrum. The smallest of these overlays is sRGB. Everything inside of this triangle represents the colors it can display. It seems limited, but it's really not. With professional photography, Adobe RGB is the standard. As you can see, there are plenty more colors in the blues and greens. If given the choice, you should use this. Lastly, you can see that Pro Photo is literally hanging off the sides. This means that it can possibly display colors that we can't even see. Although, most likely butterflies can, as well as the mantis shrimp, but that's a whole other topic. If you were able to do a search on your local computer for color profiles, you will likely see dozens of different profiles. They are either pre-installed with the system or they're added by different vendors from your different devices like your display, your scanner, and your printer. Each of these is likely a customized derivative of sRGB. Major confusion comes from the idea that photos in large color profiles like Profoto have more colors than others. This is not true. Profoto RGB may be bigger in terms of range, but the image inside a Profoto RGB color profile doesn't have more colors than a photo in sRGB. An 8-bit photo is limited to about 16.7 million RGB values, no matter what color profile it's in. The colors that are assigned just seem to jump around. Those values are simply spread out farther in color profiles like Profoto, potentially leading to a problem known as banding. I've covered that topic previously and you can find a link to that in the description below. In Photoshop, it's easy to convert from one color profile to the next. Simply go to Edit, Convert Color Profile, and make the desired change. More often than not, you won't see any noticeable difference. If you go from sRGB to Adobe RGB, you won't see any change because sRGB is smaller than Adobe RGB. However, if you go the other way, you may actually see some color shift, mostly in the blues and the greens as these fall out of the sRGB color profile. If your image does not have an embedded profile, you should assign one. You'll need to experiment with various profiles until you find one that makes the image look its best. As a general rule, most RGB images that don't have an embedded profile look best when assigned an sRGB profile, which is actually the default anyway. Many point and shoot cameras capture images in the sRGB color profile but they don't automatically embed that profile in the image. Once you have assigned a profile and saved the image with the profile embedded, the image can be color managed. Now you may be wondering how you should be supplying your files to your clients, designers, and editors. Ensure that the file is set up with an ICC color profile of Adobe RGB before sending your files out to anyone. This is absolutely the industry standard. There is only one time that I can think of that this would be the wrong thing to do when saving images with a direct intent to use for the internet, then you should stick to sRGB. Technically, modern web browsers can handle Adobe RGB just fine, but it's just a good practice since all the displays going to the website will be sRGB anyway. An ICC color profile refers to the standardization system put in place by the International Color Consortium. ICC profiles have either a .icc or the .icm extension. As I mentioned earlier, you will have a few dozen of them on your computer that are used to tell your devices what color to use. You can also create your own ICC profiles as well. With a colorimeter or a spectrocolorimeter, you can have it scan swatches of color and the software will interpret that information and give you the best results for industry standards. However, I have had this fail miserably in my own retouching business. You see, I deal with many clients and end clients, all looking at color differently on various devices. I thought long and hard on this topic and finally came to the conclusion that everyone, except me, was using 8-bit displays assigned with the sRGB color profile. So why was I using something to specifically calibrate? Everyone just complained that everything looked too yellow. So I just gave up and I color corrected the same way that they're going to view it. I figure I'm not working in the print house, so let them deal with it. Almost everything that we've talked about for the RGB color mode can be applied to CMYK. 
The biggest difference is here that instead of using sRGB or Adobe RGB as color profiles, we will need one specifically created for CMYK. Generally, if a printer wants you involved with applying a specific profile, usually not, they will supply one to you based on the specific press your images are going to be printed on. If you're just interested in seeing how your images may look when they're printed in a magazine, then you can select US Sheet Fed Coded V2. If you want to see how it may look in a newspaper, then select US Web Uncoded V2. It's not scientific, but unlike sRGB, there isn't a single color profile that the entire industry gravitates to. It's really based on each physical machine, and only the print houses themselves will have access to those profiles. Talking about color modes, color models, color profiles, and color spaces can easily lead into many more topics that should be left to the professionals of the printing industry. This video should have given you enough information to clear up the confusion and help get you started. If you found this video helpful, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can find more tips and tricks to make you a better photo retoucher.